Nice to see more rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I'd just like to uh, share an article uh, that really made an impression on me that was sent uh, by very kindly by uh, Rosemary Hill. So first of all, I'd just like to have a look at this. So this is going back, uh, well actually this is going back a couple of years, this is uh, 2017 and just as the, uh, the sun is going down in the Arctic, then this is, this is what we see, we see all of this uh, green and Margot and I noticed this um, last year in October and you can see it's an absolute mess as it is this year. Uh, I can see all this, uh, all this green, which I think uh, means that it's a uh, algal bloom, algal bloom in in, in uh, autumn uh, in the Arctic. Uh, so that brings us to this uh, uh, this article, um, and the title of it is. The tiny algae at ground zero of Greenland's melting glaciers, and it comes uh, from uh, the Guardian. So, Greenland's ice melt has been adopted by the world as a bellwether for climate crisis, but the impact on biodiversity has been overlooked at an ice station on a remote Arctic glacier. Scientists are looking to the smallest of life forms to predict the pace of species extinction. Um, so beneath the remote research huts of uh, Sumalik ice station, a vast sheet of ice stretches north for a 1,480 miles, spanning an area three times the size of France. It is holding 10% of the world's fresh water, water that has been frozen solid for millions of years. Its glacier carving season in the northeastern reaches of Greenland and the adjacent channel is full of the thunderous roars and cracks of a flotilla of icebergs um, breaking apart. Across the narrow granite ravine separating the visitor's hut from the main living quarters of the 40-year-old International Scientist Space, lab machines click and whir through the night. Uh, so far from being barren places, glaciers represent more than 10% of our land mass and are teeming with biodiversity. They're spawning and breeding places, not just for the familiar species like whales, Arctic hares and foxes, polar bears, seals, and mu musk oxen, but also for bacteria, fungi and algae that have a vital role in the planet's biodiversity. This team of microbiologists is attempting to decode the lives of those hidden creatures and their links to the ice melts across the polar caps. Algae blooms, those scientists say, are turning sun-reflecting glaciers into uh, sun-absorbing hotspots. Um, so archive photographs in Greenland's capital Newark show that the uh, glacier's vast icy mouth opened out to the Arctic Ocean as recently as the 1950s, but to reach its heart in 2019 is a hike many miles inland, crossing rocky terrain in unex entirely unexpected 23 degree heat. Lichen and unseasonal Arctic Flowers line the route, as do thirsty mosquitoes who feast on the moisture of human eyeballs, relenting only at the ice line. So this is Alexander Anesio, who's a professor in Arctic biogeochemistry from Aarhus University in Denmark. On the Guardian's first evening over supper, Anesio explains with earnest patience that snow isn't universally white. Some of the last snow to lie on the surface of the earth long after the human race is gone. Um, 
might even be red, not blood red, more a watermelon hue. He talks about how in the end the fate of our glaciers, sea level rises and biodiversity loss will not only come down to the excesses of the industrial age and our unbridled consumer life, but also to the influence of algae. So each year high on Greenland's glaciers, algae perform a remarkable migration after spending winter deep in the snowpack as dormant cysts, they awake in spring and spring through and swim through snow melt, dividing and photosynthesizing along the route. When they reach the surface, the algae turn black, dark green and crimson, colors that come from astaxanthine, a molecular cousin of the chemical that makes sweet potato orange. The algae produce it as a sunscreen as it absorbs ultraviolet light. As a consequence, the humble algae dramatically reduce the amount of sunlight reflected by the uh, Greenland's glaciers and increase the sunlight they absorb, darkening the snow and ice. So that would go for uh, algal blooms on the Arctic ice, as I just showed you, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, most concerning for the researchers out on the glacier is the fact that the algae that live on the ice surface in summer are increasingly dark brown, leading them to absorb more sunlight and exacerbate melting. So in 2019, our glaciers and ice sheets are already being darkened by dust, soot and ash from our industrial world, which provides the perfect home for algae to flourish, Anesio says. As the organisms reproduce, they melt even more snow, which in turn allows them to proliferate. And so it's like a cycle, a very bad one, a positive feedback loop. So as the algae spread, the effect will be compounded, leading to even more melting. It's a global occurrence, she says. This Increasingly a problem in the Arctic, Alpine and Himalayan glaciers, blooms of red snow and brown ice are turning up in Antarctica as well. What we hope to do is spread our research out further because we believe this is a significant factor in ice melt. This is why we are back here in Greenland, where we believe the work needs to be done elsewhere. The sound of a city block sized portion of ice as it separates from Greenland's ice shelf is a unique. A violent sonic boom is followed by an echoing machine gun style akakakak as the iceberg turns on its axis before surrendering to the ocean with an airy silence. There's a sadness to it. There's no question that the data we are seeing is concerning. One of the latest predictions is that there is a 10% chance for sea levels to rise by 2 metres by 2100. So maybe some people think 10% is not a great chance, but I don't think that I would cross the street if I had a 10% chance of being hit by a truck. This ice sheet is not just being melted by algae bloom and from above by warmer air temperatures, and in the case of the uh, sea ice from below, from the uh, warm Atlantic waters that are mixing in. Um, Arctic waters are reaching record high temperatures and wa warmer water is lapping against these great glaciers. So they're talking about the pressures on the biodiversity from this. Uh, the shrinking of the sea ice area is already having a significant impact on marine ecosystems. It is an essential habitat and breeding ground for so many species ranging from microalgae to marine mammals. 
This is a hungry time for polar bears struggling to access the sea ice to hunt for seals. The estimated 3,500 of the bears stalked the coastline of Greenland and similar stories are swapped of close encounters with the animals. We're finding plastics in the atmosphere at the center of Greenland's ice sheet, said Dr. James Bradley, assistant professor at Queen Mary University of London. Millions of tons of plastic are discarded into the environment every year and are broken down into small particles and fibers that do not biodegrade. These particles known as microplastics have now been follow, found everywhere from high mountains to deep oceans and can ca carry toxic chemicals and harmful microbes. Microplastics are tiny pieces of plastic waste. Their presence in ocean and wa waterways has received a great deal of scientific and media attention in recent years, but our growing concern is their presence in the atmosphere. To be honest, I'm massively worried, says Inesio. I just hope that we're not crossing that tipping point because I don't think humans can adapt to the rates of climbing, changing climates at the moment. Although he says he still has hope because I can see a movement in the young generation that cares. I think everyone individually can contribute. Yeah, the usual stuff. And... Uh, this is a fairly um, stark uh, conclusion to the article. Uh, leaving the ice st station by boat, negotiating the same channel of icebergs that brought us here, we pass over the scattered remnants of a glacier and stop to scoop a thousand year old chunk of ice from the water. These lumps of ice can only meet one path drifting out into the Arctic Sea at the mercy of winds and warm currents until they break apart in the ocean. Days later, further north of the island, a local ship's captain summed up with his Greenlandic dark humour. That noise you hear out there? The fizzing and cracking, he tells me, cupping his ear to the wind for dramatic effect as his old wooden shop ship passes through a fjord filled with decaying mountains of ice. That noise is the end of the world. Um, so there we have it. Um, yeah, it's a pretty stark article. And uh, for once, it doesn't finish with the, uh, the usual mantras uh, about uh, reducing greenhouse gases but just paints the picture as it is. Anyway, that's me, that's Seymour Rocks, reporting from Down Under.